Good afternoon, Larry. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time out to get involved in Business Owner Spotlight. Uh, it's lovely to meet you. Um, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself and let everybody know uh, what you do? Uh, my name is Larry. I run a small company called Lamb Films. Um, I basically facilitate the telling of stories through film, video, and nearly any form of um, medium there is, really, to think of. That, that's okay. it in, its, in its essence. Um, and what about, uh, who, who would you most like to work with, or who's your ideal customer? Well, I, I teach, and I also make films, and I don't really do a lot of, probably when I'm working with like a community group or teaching someone and seeing someone actually getting a chance to uh, kind of learn something and grow and maybe amplify their voice and what they wanted to do. That gives me a bit of a thrill. Sometimes that's your best, best customers because they're learning in a, env a different environment to learn things, learn to have a bit yep. of fun, learn to just, you know, try something they never tried before. Uh, get a positive message out of something or even sometimes we do community projects it's it's about try finding the truth between two two parties two interests to try to find yeah. a meeting ground so that is probably the most rewarding but also seeing something you've made on a, on a big screen with people that you've made it with it's hard to say but customers don't really i would call them an audience really okay that's interesting yeah um, so that's cool. And you get a, you get a buzz out of uh, out of somebody else growing and learning something there. Yes, exactly, a hundred percent. So, yeah. And uh, so, what's what sort of stories is it tell, or what sort of films is it you would make? Um, well, really, really, for me, all the films that we make come down to the three pillars: to be original. Um, kind of a, a, of a sort of human uh, social context and then have to be profitable. Okay. I mean, original, I mean, no remakes, nothing so simple to dump down for nights. I mean, something that really has come from someone else who's maybe never told that story before. So it's a original story, it's in their voice. Um, when I say that, I sort of maybe the underdog story, the story of the person who's had to rise up above something. So when we watch it, we're reminded of the human experience and we maybe leave a bit different not in a sort of a preachy way but just here's the information how do you how do you feel after it yeah if that makes sense cool and, and how, how long have you been uh, doing this for i'd say about 13 years maybe okay um, um so the, the, one of the one of the, the big uh, questions for everybody is what, what sort of what sort of impact did the pandemic have on your business I think I always said I might have actually made a move on that. But for me, uh, well, it was strange. I worked in the film industry, and the film industry stayed open the whole time. Okay. But not in the kind of end I work in. It closed. So we worked online. It shifted online. Um, So it had to move across online for you right. then? That was the one thing I read you told me. I was trying to think that anything happened. Yeah, well, I actually made one note up, and that was that's the only thing. No, we had a big project. It was really going to go. It was a big project with an American director. We were ready to go. It was yeah. a large budget. We were ready to go. And we're in Dublin, and we're just about to sign something. And I looked around, and someone was going like this instead of shaking hands. And I went, why are they doing that? And the guy said, oh, what's this COVID thing? I think it's more serious than we thought originally. And then I looked on the paper and it said St. Paddy's Day was cancelled. And I realised, oh, oh, they're not going to cancel this in Dublin unless it's serious. Yeah. Right? So over a period of uh, two months, our whole project totally evaporated and we lost something we worked three or four years for. We'd been to America for. We'd pump money into it, pump time into it. And then during, during COVID, a similar film came out. Now, this is not, this film didn't copy us, but it was Kenneth yeah. Branagh with Belfast. It was obviously, it's a story of his childhood, but a similar film came out. 
and there's no way we could then do our film. Yeah. So the whole thing was eva evaporated. Now, I'm not saying they copied us, they didn't. This is a guy's life story. So yeah, yeah. But it's just, yeah. this happens sometimes. It just, this is life. So he got his opportunity. So then we had to just think of everything else. So I had to readdress everything. We sort of calibrate uh, our outlook and, and just go for other projects. Also, we were in the middle of production on a film. And we shot 20 minutes of a 90 minute film and we had to stop. And then when we tried to start again, one of the kids had gone from being 15 to being 17. He'd basically gone through puberty. All the people got muscles. That shape <laughs> in your head had become fashionable, right? Again, that sort of late 80s haircut. We all had that, but all being at the gym. And I'll be honest, the, the maybe people's appearance had just changed. You know, maybe they yeah. got the sunbeds, or I don't know. So we had to scrap that and we had to start the whole film again. But quite so. So I'm keen to understand. I mean, I, I can I can imagine it. that sounds like a, an incredibly stressful period. And I know the pandemic, you know, had similar effect on a lot of a lot of people and a lot of businesses. But I'm keen to understand. Well, how did you deal with that as a business owner? Well, like everything, you have to look like to diversify, but you also got to put it in perspective. I mean, yeah, we couldn't make a film. Boo hoo. Yeah, people had their parents land in ICU units. Those people needed help. You know, yeah. I was more interested. That, that was kind of more interesting. How to keep seeing, how to keep others seeing. Yeah, you know, a small kid, how to keep him active. So things shift away from, you know, films and business and all that. Stuff. So it's just kind of, there's nothing you can do. You just look to keep going. So I ended up working for the education board a wee bit and we were making online films with kids. And that was a good experience too. It yeah. was, the films were secondary. It was about communication, having fun and, you know, just really talking to people and find out how they were getting on because some of them, some people find it harder than others. Yeah. You know, it was also about finding out like who's really going to have your back here. Yeah. We got a little bit, I got a wee bit, a little bit of a grant from the Arts Council. That was nice. I never expected that. Sure. I got to do a project, um, kind of refugee in Islam. So it was really good. So there was that. There was actually, I thought, a little bit of a support network, a little bit. Uh, we didn't get every business got ten thousand pounds. We didn't get that because the building we were in doesn't pay rates, so we didn't get it. But it's just I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. You just have to keep yourself. The most important thing is to keep yourself active. Keep seeing in that. Yeah, you know, just to keep perspective on it. Keep perspective. I know you'll get to make films again. And then there's all this crisis. Like, oh, that's it. The cinemas have closed. Will never open again. The industry's yeah. over. Netflix is taken over. And then I'm like, I don't think so. Because as soon as the pandemic finished, two cinema chains opened up in Belfast. Yeah. <laughs> We've now got an IMAX. Every time I go to the cinema, it's bung. People screening all the time. There's more films being made in there ever was. So it's it's complicated. You kind of have to take yourself out of all that and, uh, and just look at a far wider world and see yeah try and try and cut through the noise a little bit yeah and see people that you really kind of respect like i i the people that i respected in the pandemic are people that you know opened up their restaurant went right we're turning this into a soup kitchen we got to do this we got this i know people that i thought were it were money obsessed but they actually weren't money obsessed they were work obsessed yeah they just had to be working they didn't care if all their clients were uh, people coming in, pensioners for a food bank, they didn't care, they just wanted to be busy. I mistook that in people. And then other people that I thought, you know, maybe, were, well, well, it's hard to explain, we just find it harder because it was a social side of work for yes. some people. It was a social side of maybe, but I worked shared office and not seeing everybody was kind of, you know. Yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, and so okay, so so that's interesting. So that's um, how you handle it from business side of things. What, what what did you learn about yourself? Mm. That's a good, that's a really good question because all these things, it is a, it is a good journey. I learned that I knew the things were going to change, right? And I know that you're never stay, you're never stuck in the present. You're always between the past and the future. So you always got to think, right? This is going to change. This is going to pass. 
got to be ready for it, got to be prepared. So just, it's like the winter time. Hmm. Sometimes it's really dark here. Just go in there and we'll go, right, this is the three months, the three weeks we plan stuff. We can't really yeah. go out. It's dark. Utilize this time. Utilize this light, right? There's not, and then we'll be away doing something else again. Uh, you know, after Paddy's day, whatever, it'll open up again. The weather will get better. So those months I kind of let myself down. That's what I kind of did. Just planned a little bit. And then, I suppose, just took, just, Took a back seat for a while too. Did all the things. Yeah. You know, did a little bit of art things, things I always wanted to do. And yeah, just. I suppose, I suppose, I I suppose it's, it's, you know, you, you were gifted some time and, and you seized the opportunity. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think so. It's a nice time to shut down. It's a nice time to. to, to, to so no, it's but a step, step, step off the perpetual motion of chasing money, paying on night bills, paying yeah. bills, chasing invoices, chasing work. It was just nice to step off that and say, right, you know what? Like sign on and get some dough on money. I say, right, we're all right here for a while. Everybody can eat, you know. Yeah. We've got a simpler time for for a few months, was it? Yeah, and it's how you can help help other people. What, what can you do now to do? Does anybody else need a bit of a help? Like a parent, you're gonna look after. Them and stuff. So it's more about families, it's more about looking after people. And then you also saw as well, from a business point of view as well, the interesting thing I saw was all the people that have been put up on pedestals that were billionaires are, and all this, and seen as industry leaders, and all these people that I'd see people, not one of them helped anybody during the pandemic. Not one. Not one person. And that should be an indicator. That really should be a little bit about money and about capitalism. All that. Capitalism, things like that. You're, no one's going to come on this show says, but it is a wee bit of a disease. We is a wee bit of an addictive, right? Yeah. I know people with nothing, with small businesses that have nothing. Mm. That were setting up soup kitchens, feeding pensioners, doing this. I know bars right, right where I live. The people think, or, you know, just I work on men's clubs, or, oh, they're not cool. But they were looking after all the pastors in the whole area, right? Yeah. Whereas I saw all the boys that were chains, there were all these other things. They did nothing for anybody. Because at the end of the day, they were run by hedge funds, they were run by shareholders, they didn't care. So what it taught me a little bit was about my own business as well. There's got to be heart in it, or else there's no point. If there's no heart in this, and I believe if you want to make a film, you've got to have determination, imagination, and heart. That's the three things. And that's what taught me a lot about life. I said, yeah, yeah, all these people, all these Richard Bransons, all these the guys that invented the Vax, uh, your man from Amazon, your man from Apple, all these people, they did absolutely nothing except play on the market. They profited from other people's misery. So that was a little lesson. And I'll be honest, everybody talks about success and all these things. Success is only the happiness you feel. Everything else doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about anything else. It doesn't matter how many awards you have. It doesn't matter about it. It's how you feel inside, right? Yeah, that's so it. All that's those good. people will have to look at themselves at the end and say, you know what? Did nothing. Whereas yeah. everybody, people I know really surprised me. I saw a lot of heart and I was really encouraged, right? But it came from the places that you least expected it sometimes. Yeah, that's uh, that's really that's really interesting. And um yeah, I think you're right. It's you know it's that sort of community, and I think I think you 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 said a brilliant thing there. If there's no heart in it. There's no point. And I really like that. And I'm not I'm not saying anything. So those people bring about business, and they're they're you know like a guy from Tesla. They they create things like that. But at the end, you have to understand without any social responsibility, yeah. right? They're 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 basically making money on, on on the backs of everybody else. It's a, it's in a propagated system, and they did they did make money off. The pandemic and he did fluctuate just like i'm not being funny but just maybe this is controversial but i'll just say it anyway that whole liz trust thing that was only in to sink the market so that they guys those could profit on she was laughing on her way out of that that's just me maybe that's controversial but that's okay i can say that that's my yeah. opinion of course right? yeah okay. but so for me what it showed about real people about real humanity and it really did we saw a prime minister lose uh, win by the biggest mandate in like 60 years, but also lose, not because of all the other things the guy did, because he went against the goodwill of the people. And yeah. I thought that was a really, 
there was a real sense of community. People I never thought would do a lot of things, did a lot of things. People I was really, you know, I was taken back. That heart really was something to me. Yeah. So that was a bit that I got from and I also then got from, then I say to people, hey, really? What did all those big businesses do? Go on, tell me one thing. And nobody can ever tell me anything. Yeah. That's that's it. It. Even here, you look at the biggest companies here, Right, I'm not going to mention them. I'm not going to start your show up. But the biggest sure. companies here actually profited from it too. So that's all I'm saying. I, I, the sense of community was 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 more important. Yeah, and, and the world felt like a big community sometimes. And you know, and now so it's, it's always like uh, it's always like you know you um, you know uh, come out of it with a come out of the whole thing with a you know a renewed sense of purpose. Um, and I'm yeah. keen to know, like, what what are, what do you see is what's the future look like, and what do you see as the main challenges moving forward now? Then, well, the future's open, right? Because the future is just something. The future is totally open, right? There's nothing stopping me now doing whatever I want to do within the world of making films, making TV, and doing whatever. There's nothing stopping me. Uh, Belfast has made the most profitable television show in the world ever, and mm-hmm. twenty years ago it didn't have an industry, right? You know, so there's nothing stopping me. Except myself, it's the only thing yeah. or, or ego or a sense of individualism as a more title or something like that. So, so for me, the whole thing, and it made me adjust and it made me sort of reassemble it, reinvigorate myself, but also made me realize the actual core of what I wanted to do when I started making films and how I shifted from that. So for me, one of the most important things is, that, and this is just me, this is not what, how you should do things. I would never give anyone any advice or anything, right? Yeah. But for me, I like to make films with my friends, with people that I like. Yes. Also, if I get a feeling about something, I, I, I'm going to go for it. I go for it more often than maybe not feeling about a person, about a project, just about something. I tend to go on that a lot more. And I suppose just uh, doing something that you really want to do with people that you, you want to do with for maybe even less money. I don't really, that, that, that would be more that makes sense yeah it definitely it makes a lot of sense and you know i've, I've actually it's been a, it's quite a um uh, insightful and, and liberating chat we've had <laughs> I'm quite I, don't know about that. I don't know about the business part but i'm not really a business a bit you know what, i think i think um, i think um you know for me i mean you're in business i think you're in business for a lot of the right reasons um you know you talk talk about how you sum up success there and i think sometimes people can can lose sight of what success is, you know, maybe it's dictated by society when it should be dictated by ourselves. It should be. You're right. And everything we're taught about success is not really what it is. You understand? The successful people, the people that have been in a long, loving relationship, they've done whatever they wanted with their life. They've never had that stress of work. Yeah. <laughs> to work. And with all respect, they worked over like a city council or, <laughs> or yeah. the you know, you, you understand for the third uh, what is it, social sector, whatever it is, and they just had an unstressful sort of life. Sort Sorry, of thing thing. they wanted, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. I look at people now, and it's not the people that have made loads of money like they were rich. Some are, some that's what they've, that's their path. It's sure. everybody's got their own sort of path to happiness, but they've got to make sure it's, it's the right path, and they're doing it because of them, not doing it because of what they think yeah. they should do. Like when you leave college, when you start, when you go to college or university, you know, you never know what you want to do. You're only a kid. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. You understand? So I work with a lot of students. And I say, look, it doesn't matter if you think you want to do this and then you end up going to do something else. That's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought yeah. I wanted to work in hotels. And then the reality of working 100 hours a week and less than, less than the humble people complaining on me, I just like, <laughs> oh. So then I got, we were working in a uh, a catering college and we got a video camera and then we got to make low budget films and that to me was far more exciting than hospitality and things like that yeah. but it's just you grow you evolve everybody does and You're also right. be kind to people as well that's always something and that's just you know and don't be afraid to ask any questions yeah but, no listen to know what it's it's you know, uh, hard to say really it's, it's a, there's a lot in there, but I think, um, you know, I think, uh, as I say, it's, it's your, your sense of purpose. And if there's no heart in it, there's no point. I think I think that's the biggest thing I'll take away from, from our chat today. And uh, like, I appreciate you coming on and, and getting involved. And, and I think I said to you before, be candid. I think you've, uh, you've, 
<laughs> you've uh, <laughs> you definitely took that to heart and i appreciate it um i look as i say thanks so much for uh for, for taking the time out there well that's okay it's just that everybody that works in an industry isn't always the same so everybody's gonna yeah. so i don't do a lot of corporate stuff i do a lot of things that just more interest in me and i'm not saying that's the right way to do it that's just the path that's worked worked for way for you so it makes me feel better, right? And so, that's that's what it's that's what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Well, I think so. But then other people, it's not all people are in different situations. Other people have got a business, they've got 12 employees, mm. they've got uh, Russian, you know. I I it's very simplistic to say, oh, business shouldn't be about you know, I know people that work really hard of 12 employees, the high price of the rent is going up, the yeah. price of the energy is going up, even though it's meant to be capped at a two percent profit, suddenly it's gone up like right. Yeah. So I know people really have it tough and they just want to, they just want to do the right thing. And they're really, really good people and they're business people. And, you know, I feel for them. I really do. So mm -hmm. it's not like I'm, I'm not dissing all businesses or anything. The only point I was trying to make was the really big successful companies, when it really came down to it, when they really could have shown something else, they showed a real dark side. Whereas the smaller businesses and the people that had the smaller margins, yeah. they were opening their doors and they were doing a lot more things. And it taught me a lot more. It reminded me, right, when I go back, seeing this all ends, I'm going to down anyone from the Sandy Road that opened yes. that cafe up for the homeless people at 6 o'clock more. I'm going to down to buy food off her. Why should yeah. I go, go to a corporate chain that did nothing for me? I sacked yeah. everybody. And if you're in a union, they'll get rid of you. you know, so that... I suppose everybody should do that, but that to me is, is a better way of doing it. Instead of just, here's some celebrity on Instagram trying to sell me some crap. Yeah. It just makes you think, right? And it just, I then I use that to challenge other people's perceptions, perceptions but they then challenge me back. Yeah. You know, no, listen, I mean, it, it makes all sense, you know, and like, you know, without a cliche, like support local, but it's that sense of community, isn't it? You know, and, and if everybody helps everybody else, then everybody's going to be better. That's sort of. That's the I, first really big economics, you know? Yeah. Uh, the first rule of economics, and they took that out when they made a, a, a change in a more capitalist manifest. But that's the first rule of economics. I know it's hard to believe, right? But I actually worked in the London School of Economics, right? Okay, that's yeah. The first rule of economics, right? That how everybody, but that was taken out a little bit. You know, yeah, we're taught scarcity, aren't we? I didn't work in an economic uh, factor part. I worked in the hospitality. <laughs> By the way, I just want to point out was <laughs> economic <laughs> thing. You know, so. Yeah. Listen, through what January, I just I really have enjoyed uh, hearing a bit about that today, and I do appreciate you being so candid. And uh, listen, I can't wait to share this with everybody and and uh, see what you think. But it was lovely to meet you today. Sure, sure, and uh, please get everyone. I don't know if you might feel but but get follow Lamb Thorns. You, you personally tell all your charms. We'll yes, yeah, so I'll do. Like follow the lambs, not the sheep. Right. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll never fleece you. You understand? Like yeah. Get the plug in. I like it. Follow lamb films. That's no, what we're, we're, we're standing on our feet. Like I go on to make more lamb films. You want? <laughs> it's just, I, I, I wasn't sure what this was going to be. To be honest, I, I wasn't sure it was going to be a to and fro when people ask you questions. That's why I just thought it'd be easier just to agree to it. That's it. Hundred percent.